considered the possibility of time travel. The following three stories certainly give food for thought, as it appears that at least three such occasions may have taken place in Pelsall village. I can only describe these three stories as possible incidents of time travel. Whether witting or unwitting, it does seem that these people have somehow managed to bridge the gap between past and present, or future and present. Whilst doing one of my annual ghost walks, one of the party, a gentleman, recalled that as a youngster delivering newspapers early one morning, he noticed two elderly ladies dressed in black standing next to each other talking on Pelsall Common. What struck him as odd was how strange they seemed because of their mannerisms and the way they were dressed. They appeared to be wearing Victorian clothing. As he passed them they didn't seem to notice him at all. Without further thought he continued his round, then shortly before turning the bend, he looked back out of curiosity. The ladies had disappeared. Since the ladies had been standing on the edge of the common, had they walked either way, they would have easily been visible, and there was nothing in the way and nowhere for them to go. The memory of this rather odd sighting of the two elderly Victorian ladies standing on the edge of Pelsall Common had always stuck with the gentleman as he is convinced that on that day he saw two ghosts, both of whom were completely oblivious to the fact that he was there. In this case it could be asked, were they ghosts or a couple of elderly Victorian ladies who had somehow momentarily passed through a portal. I guess we will never know. The following story, I would suggest, gives a tantalising suggestion of witting time travel. Back in 2013, during one of my ghost walks, when walking past the old Wesleyan school in Chapel Street, Pelsall, one of my party, a lady, was keen to tell me her story. She told me that when she was a child attending the Wesleyan school in Chapel Street, she saw the ghost of a young boy wearing short khaki bloomers and a three-cornered hat which was tied under his chin. The strangely dressed boy was seen by many in the classroom, including the teacher. As they all left the classroom, including the teacher, to locate the child, they watched the strangely dressed boy simply disappear into a wall. Terrified by the experience, the teacher gathered the children together and took them back into class. The memory of this strange event had never faded. After all these years, the lady told me, in this case, the fact that the ghostly child simply disappeared into a wall almost suggests that the disappearance was purposeful in that perhaps his portal was located within the wall. I would also consider the following sighting to be that of a time traveller rather than a ghost. Due to the fact that the apparition in question appears to have wittingly managed to cross the line just long enough to be seen. Sophie and her friend were sitting on the floor in the bedroom with the door open which looked out onto the landing. Although family members had gone to bed the landing light was left on until the girls were ready to turn in for the night. Suddenly the girls heard what sounded like pots and pans being thrown up the wall and falling on the floor. 
As the girls looked at each other in shock, they suddenly became aware of the apparition of a young man wearing a white t-shirt and jeans run out of the wall on the landing and down the stairs. Instinctively, the girls shot up and gave chase downstairs, only to find that there was nothing there. When they got back upstairs, they carefully checked in on the other two upstairs bedrooms, only to discover that the occupants were fast asleep. This strange and unexplainable experience has never left the girls. Was this a ghost or a time traveller? I guess we will never know. If you have ever experienced or seen what you would consider to be a time traveller, please get in touch as I would be intrigued to hear your story.